Welcome to Twin Lakes Worship Center. Last week, if you were watching or stayed tuned or hopefully maybe even here, I spoke about how to find peace in your life and the things that we need in our life in order to have a peaceful life. Well, today I want to sort of do a follow-up message on that and share with you another passage of scripture that shares how we can live peaceably among all men. Now that's a big that's a big thing to say among all men. So if you have trouble with people in your life or in your life finding peace with others, I want you to stay tuned because the Bible gives us clear instruction of the things we need and need to do if we're going to have peace in our life. So you stay tuned. God bless you and I hope the Lord speaks to your heart. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to be turning to the book of Romans. And chapter number 12, Romans chapter number 12. And if you're visiting today, we're especially glad you're here. And we want you to just join right in and you worship and fellowship with us this morning. It's good to see you and good for you to be here with us. Romans chapter number 12. And verse, beginning with verse Number 18, it says, If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Now, if you were here last week or or watched on television or YouTube or FaceTime or Instabook or whatever it is, however you're getting the message these days, Last week, I talked about, I gave gave you some scripture and a message about how to find peace in this unpeaceful world. And you remember, one of the things that we talked about, or in, in essence, the whole sermon was about not being judgmental. That if you want to have peace in your life, then it's essential for you not to be a judgmental person. Well, today, I want to follow that message up if you will, a part two or second page or part B or however you want to look at it, of another passage of Scripture that tells us this. If you want to live with peace in your life, here's how we find it. You see, the Bible gives us the answer for everything that we seek. I believe the bottom line, if you really boiled everything down to what it is we want out of life and out of this world, it all comes down to we want to have peace. We may think that peace comes in other ways. We may think, well, if I had that great big house on the lake, then I would be at peace. If I drove this kind of car, then I would be at peace. If I had this much money, I would be at peace. When in reality, if joy and peace in your life is what you're wanting, all you need do is open the pages of this blessed book and apply it daily. That's all you got to do to find peace in your life. This passage of scripture here tells us if we're going to live peaceably, then we've got to come to the understanding of this. In doing so, we are going to have to interact with each other. We've got to interact with each other. Now the problem is you know as well as I do, There are some people in this world that are not happy unless they're miserable. Amen? They are not happy unless they're causing trouble or problems. And what makes them really happy is if they can draw you in to that equation with them. Now, what I want to talk about today is this. How do we live in a world of people like that and still have peace? Well, this passage of Scripture gives us the very outline of how to live in an unpeaceful world and still have peace, okay? So here we go. How do we have peace in this world? Well, look at verse number 17. He says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of of all men. The first thing that he tells us is this. If you want to live in this world and have peace, the first thing you've got to do is learn to provide 
all things honest in the sight of men. In other words, be an honest person. Well, Brother Jeremy, how's that going to affect me with this or that or that person or this situation or whatever? Listen, don't question how the plane flies. Just trust that it's going to. When God says, this is how you're going to have peace in your life, I feel like he's the one we ought to listen to and take his advice. Amen? And the first thing he says is this. For you to have peace with all men in this world, the first thing you got to do is be an honest person. Now, why is being honest so essential? Why is it that God says that is crucial element for you to having peace in your life? Here's why. Do you realize that honesty and truth are the very makeup of God. If you run a DNA sample on God, it would come back and spell out truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, there's nothing you can do to be further away from God. There's nothing you can do that gets you further away from where God wants you to be than when you are dishonest. You can't do it. You have to be honest. We're good at twisting things sometimes, aren't we? You know, and, 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 and hey, I, preachers, we're the same way. Somebody asks you, well, brother, how's your church doing? Doing great. How many is it running? Oh, 250, 275, 200. Knowing you had 2.30 last Sunday. That's what we call a ministerial evaluation. We are evaluating what we felt like it should have been. Listen, nothing will get you further away from peace in your life than being dishonest. Because nothing gets you further away from where God is than being dishonest. I like the little story about the man went to a deli. And he decided he was going to buy one of them roasted chickens. And he went in and talked to the deli, and he said, uh, I need to get a chicken. Well, the deli guy behind the counter knew he only had one chicken left. And he said, uh, well, what kind of chicken you want? And he said, well, a roasted chicken. And he got it out, and he laid it on. He said, how, much is it, how big is that chicken? He weighed, laid it on the scale, and it weighed two pounds. The guy said, well, I don't know. I don't know if that'll be big enough. If you got one bigger, well, the deli guy thought, you know, I'm going to throw this chicken away or sell it. Yeah, let me see what I got. And he takes the same chicken off the scales. He acts like he's doing something. He sets it back on the scales, and where the guy can't see, he puts his finger on the scale. And he causes it to go up to two and a half pounds. The guy says, well, I, yeah, that's good. That, that, that'll probably work. But he said, I tell you what, my kids might drop by, so just give me both of them. How about that? Let me tell you what the Bible says. The truth will find you out. The truth will find you out. And he says, if you want to have peace in this life, then the first thing you've got to do is be honest in all things you do with mankind. No, that's not going to fix that jerk you work for. No, that's not going to this or that. Or... Maybe it will. Maybe it's just that that's what they're looking for is somebody that is truly honest in this world that they can put some confidence in. Be an honest person. The second thing, verse 19. He says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Now I want you to look back at verse 17 again, that first line. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Let me tell you what God's word says if you want to have peace in this world. You have got to get to a point in your life where you understand, not up here, but down here. Where you understand this is right because God says that it's right. That we cannot provide evil for evil. We cannot get even. We cannot look for opportunities 
for vengeance to come out on ourselves. God says, if you will just trust me, listen, you know as well as I do, if you live in this world long enough, somebody's going to do you dirty. Amen? Somebody's going to do you wrong. They're going to say something that wasn't true about you and who they told it to is going to believe it and they're going to tell somebody else. You're going to face being done wrong. Now, the question is how do we have peace when this goes on in the world? Here's how. We do not recompense evil for evil. We do not avenge ourselves. Boy, I'm going to tell you, that's one of the hardest lessons in the world to learn. One of the hardest things in the world to do is when somebody has lied about you, done this, said that, cut your throat, stabbed you in the back, done whatever, and now you have the opportunity to get even. Now you have the opportunity to give payback, retribution, for what they've done to you. But let me tell you what happens when you do that. When you do that, you just took God out of the equation. And when you take God out of that equation, two things are going to happen. Number one, you are not going to have peace from it. You're not going to have peace from it. I can tell you from personal experience, when you go to get even with somebody, you go to pay them back for what they've done, even though they were wrong. You will not get peace from doing that. You know how I know? Because I've done it. You know how I know I didn't have peace? Because that's all I thought about. It consumed my mind. It consumed my world. I'd lay in bed at night and I'd think about that low-down rascal said this and done that. And I, I told them people, you wanna, well, you think that's bad. Let me tell you what he did. And you don't get peace. What you find out is before long, you are consumed with this circumstance. The second thing that happens when you get avenge yourself is you take God out of the equation and he no longer says, vengeance is mine. Let me tell you what I've also learned. In those situations, if you step back and say, God... I'm just going to put it in your hands. I'm going to trust you to see who hears what and knows what and how they do what. I'm going to trust you. Let me tell you what happened. The first thing you'll do is you'll start to get peace about it. Now, the old devil, he'll bring it back. and He'll try to get you fired up and stoke your fire and get you mad and you've got to do it again. Lord, I'm just going to trust you. Let me tell you what will happen. God then steps in and says, I'll handle this. I remember a few years back, there was a guy that was saying some things and doing some things to me and about me, and, and I went and talked to my dad about it, and I said, Dad, this is, you know, this is bad. Some of the stuff he's saying is bad, and it's, it's really trying to hurt my ministry. It's really trying. We talked about it, came to the agreement of all the things we could do. We could slip over there in the cover of darkness, and we could wear a mask. And we could let the air out of his tires. And we, you know, after we got through all that, that's what we call our spiritual venting. We both agreed, let it go. Take, let it take care of it, it. You know, God will take care of it. It wasn't three days. And this guy was foolish enough. Now get this. That he drove to my mom and dad's house. Knocked on my dad's front door and commenced to try to convince him dad that what he was doing was right. Now, my dad had a biting dog. He didn't. I'm teasing. But let me tell you what he did get. He got both barrels right in the face of being told what was right and what was wrong and I ain't heard from that guy since. Let me tell you what happened. When I stepped back and said, I'm not going to do this. Every morsel of my being wanted to. Let me tell you what happened. My father took care of it. 
my father dealt with him one-on-one, face-to-face. And let me tell you what will happen. If you'll do the same thing, your father will do the same thing. He will deal with that situation. He will deal with that person. But if you get involved and try to help him, he'll back up and say, I'm not going to do it. So how do we have peace when we've got these things going on? The first thing it says is you've got to be honest. You're never more dislike God than when you're being dishonest. The second thing you've got to do is you've got to avenge not. You can't get even. You can't recompense evil for evil and let God. He says, I will repay, saith the Lord. Then the third thing, and I'm almost done. I'm going to play golf. (laughs) I'm just being honest. (laughs) Says right there, be honest. The third thing, verse 20. Therefore, If thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Now surely, I didn't read that right. Because we are good at helping others. I don't believe there's a person sitting in this building that if they went to any other person in this building today and said, man, listen, I'm, I'm in a bind. Have you got $20 I can borrow? If they had it, they'd give it to them. Amen? You know that's true. There's not a person here that if you knew somebody else here was hungry or thirsty or had a need, that you wouldn't do something to try to get that need met. We're good at that. But that's not what this verse says. Let's read it again and let's really, really think about this. Therefore, if thine enemy, I mean that low-down rotten scoundrel that's been spreading that junk about you. I'm talking about the one that went into your boss and tried to get you fired. I'm talking about the one that's done all they could do to destroy your family. I'm talking about the one that is the last on your first list and the first on your last list. It says, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. You know, There's a passage of scripture, and I don't like it, but it's there, so we got it. It's true, it's right. And it says this if you give good gifts to those you love, big deal. But if you give gifts to those you don't love, now you're tapping in to the Spirit of Christ. Now, I paraphrased all that, but that's what it meant. That's what he's saying right here. He said, if you want to have peace, then here's what you got to do. If you see your enemy in need, help him. If your enemy is in need, help him. Now, why is that crucial? Well, listen to what the rest of the verse says. It says, for in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head now we like that part don't we we like that part let's be honest because we've been looking for that loophole we've been looking for that little part well I gotta love them and I gotta act like I'm concerned about them but when I do this it'll be mm, right in the gut I mean puts new meaning to that old song set my soul on fire But the problem is we're misinterpreting what this means. When he says, by doing so, you heap coals of fire on his head, here's what you've got to understand. Anywhere in the scripture that you read the word fire, it bears a couple of meanings to it. Number one, the Holy Spirit is often symbolically represented by fire. You remember when the prophet prayed and the fire fell from the sky and consumed the altar and all? 
that was representative of the Holy Spirit of God. That is the hand of God reaching down. It also is representative, oftentimes, of judgment. That's why when they had to offer a sacrifice for their sins, they laid it upon the altar and they burned it. Because the fire was consuming the sacrifice in judgment. So here really is what this verse is saying. It's saying this. When you see to the needs of your enemy, what's happening is this. Number one, the hand of God will reach down and touch them. Now that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to touch them around the neck. He's going to touch them. And he is going to represent the truth to them. The second thing that it will do is it will be bringing judgment upon that person. Judgment upon that person, whether it be good or bad or whatever. In essence, here's what it's saying. When you tend to the needs of your enemy, God will take that enemy into his hands and he will do accordingly to what they need. Whether they need to be shown the truth, he'll show them the truth. Whether they need to be judged for the way they're acting, he'll bring judgment. Whether he needs to get a hold of them and bring them some love. But either way, here's what I've learned. When you give to the needs of your enemy, more times than not, that person will no longer be your enemy. More times than not, that person will no longer be your enemy may not be your best friend but they may not be your enemy so in essence here's what the scripture saying if you want to live with peace in a world full of jerks can I say that on Sunday morning okay you might have to edit that Brad I don't know here's what you got to do Number one, you got to be honest. You cannot get off on the right foot if you don't start off on the right foot, and that's by being honest. Be honest. The second thing you got to do is you've got to avenge not. You cannot ever how secretively or, or minute you may think it is, you cannot try to get even. And by doing so, you're allowing God to get even for you. And I'm going to tell you, God knows how to do it better than you ever could. The third thing you've got to do is you've got to not stop giving. Regardless of what they've done, said, or acted, or portrayed, if you see that they're in need, then you provide for their need. And by doing, God says, when you do that, You've set them right in the palm of my hand. And you have set the stage for me to be able to deal with them through fire. You know, sometimes fire is what makes something more pure. Do you know that? In other words, sometimes these people are so full of the devil, they've got to put a little fire in there to get him out. Sometimes it's fire that makes something that was valuable even more valuable. And he says, by doing this, you've allowed me to deal with them. Now, I've preached all of this when really all I had to do was read chapter 21. But I figured I ought to preach a little bit before I left to go back off anyway. <laughs> so, here is the grand sum of the whole sermon. Verse 21, listen to what it says. Be not overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. Paul said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So as you're faced with all of these people and problems and things that are trying to steal you of joy and peace and happiness, remember this. How you defend against that is this. Overcome evil with good 
And I'll tell you what you can do. That person that tried to get you fired or split your family up or run you down or this or that, you see they got a need, you give to them. You be honest in all that you do. You try not to get even with them, and I'll tell you what you'll do. You'll go home tonight, and you'll lay your head on the pillow, and you'll go sound asleep. And that's sure a lot better than laying in there thinking, oh, how can I get them back? How can I this? And I wonder who all he's told that. And I wonder that. And when you do it, God says, son, don't worry about it. I'll deal with them myself. Overcome evil with good. In other words, just do what's right. Well, thank you for staying tuned, and I hope and pray that your heart was open and you heard these important things that we need and need to be doing if we're going to live peaceable in a world that has no peace. I want to thank you for staying tuned, and as always, I want to invite you to come out and worship with us here at Twin Lakes Worship Center. Our services are at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. We'd love to see you. Come see us. God bless you, and you have a great day great way.